Do you want another real reason why I work out so much? It's so that we can lift our books when we go book shopping. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, these are all books I got during my birthday week. And I want to talk about them because I have some really cool finds. When I tell you that I am so excited for this book haul, it is because I think this book haul has some of the most exciting books of the year for me. And that says a lot because I am still waiting, obviously, for Powerless Book 2 to come out this summer. However, in the meantime, we have amazing books that I have been wanting to read, I've been wanting to get my hands on, and I finally have them, and I can't wait to share them with you. So let's go ahead and get into it. I have this, which actually is a Christmas gift I got for my brother. It took a long time to get here because it was on pre-order. Very, very excited to show you guys. This may be my pride and joy. You guys aren't ready for this, okay? We have Ruthless Vows. This is the special edition copy of from Owl Crate. It has the blue sprayed edges. And if you remember from book one, the cover was purple with a typewriter. This has some sort of flowers. I'm not really sure, but there's typewriting in the back and there's a sword in the middle. Book one was beautiful. It was whimsical. It was so emotional. I was crying several times reading this book. I expect nothing less from this book. I expect it to be five stars, six stars, 10 stars, and I can't wait to do a reading vlog about it. Another book my brother got me, but this one was for my birthday. You guys may laugh at me for this cover, but I will explain. She is the moment. She is Starter Villain by Josh Scalzi. This is the author that wrote the Kaiju Preservation Society. That was really big last year. And I have not read it, but when I saw this book on my brother's TBR pile at his house, I decided I needed to get my hands on this too because it sounds so good. Hear me out. The blurb on the dust cover says, Inheriting your uncle's supervillain business is more complicated than you might think, particularly when you discover who's running the place. I'm not entirely sure what this book is about, but I have really high hopes that this is gonna be a five star, a banger. Should I do a reading vlog on this book? Should I let you guys, what do you guys think? Let me know. This is way out of my scope or wheelhouse of what I typically read, but I'm willing to read this, guys. For you. And then the next book that he got me is Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. This is book one in the Mistborn series. I'm not really sure how many books are in this series, but I recently read Warbreaker, which was my first five-star read of 2024. I really wanted to read Mistborn. I've had a few recommendations about this book already, and he got it for me. So thank you, Steven. This is, I'm pretty sure this is fantasy. It is super floppy. It's like the perfect amount of floop and I love it so much. So let me know if you've read Mistborn. I really enjoy Brandon Sanderson's writing. I find it to be the perfect amount of sarcasm and wit sprinkled in the, mi the midst of a compelling fantasy world with really, really diverse characters. He builds characters and worlds with an equal amount of nuance and conviction, and I just find them to be so, so good. I'm very excited that I have this book. And read all of Brandy Sandy's books, honestly. It's 2024, guys, and we're still going strong with our Hydra jug, by the way. Next up, we have more gifts. This one is from my best friend, Kara. She is so, so sweet. She knows my love for Jane Austen. She is helping support the cause of my current obsession with her. So we have first up this beautiful, beautiful seven book collection of all of Jane Austen's works. That includes Sense and Sensibility, Pride and Prejudice, Mansfield Park, Emma, North Anger Abbey, Persuasion, and Lady Susan. I have yet to read Lady Susan, but I am very excited to have this and add it to my collection, to my Jane Austen shelf. She's stunning. Get a closer look at the details of this, and it is very, very heavy, but I'm excited. I, I love this. Maybe I will read some of these books one day to my future kids and make them in love. With Jane Austen too. If I can convince you guys of anything, it is to read a Jane Austen novel. It is for everybody. I don't care. Staying on somewhat of the same train here, we also have A Most Agreeable Murder, which is a standalone mystery novel 
but it is for Jane Austen lovers, okay? If you like Agatha Christie, if you like Jane Austen, this is the book for you. It says, when a wealthy bachelor drops dead at a ball, a young lady takes on the decidedly improper role of detective in this action-packed debut comedy of manners and murder. I'm gonna buddy read this with Kara and I will report back on whether this is worth the read or not, but it was in the new and notable section of Barnes & Noble and I don't know, I just feel like this book, yes, the cover is also beautiful, but I do think this book, if it's done well, if it's done correctly, it will encompass everything I love about Jane Austen, Agatha Christie, murder mysteries, Regency romances, everything like that. So. Here's hoping. The next books that I got, I got them for myself recently, either at thrift stores or used bookstores, and I just am so impressed with used bookstores, with thrift stores. Honestly, if you are trying to budget and you want to go book shopping, don't neglect your local thrift shop because you may be surprised to find some hidden gems there. The first book I wanted to talk about is The No Show by Beth O'Leary. I read The Flat Share by her. I absolutely loved it. She is one of my new go-tos for romance reads. She is a clean romance author, by the way, so if you're looking for that, go ahead and check out Beth O'Leary. This is a rom-com about three women who, unbeknownst to them, realize that they are in a relationship with the same man. I, I don't know if they're going to get together and plot revenge or what. I don't know how they figure this out, but I'm very excited to find out. In my opinion, I don't think Beth O'Leary is like a regular romance author. I think that she really dives deeper into relationships and makes them more than just surface level relationships. So I'm excited with this book because I think we're going to get some of the same vibes. Similar with Jojo Moyes, I feel like the characters are more fleshed out than you're going to get with like, you know, a cheesy, quick little rom com -y book that you would typically find on book talk or something so if that's your cup of tea you may want to check out her another author who is again clean romance rom-com is Catherine center and i read from her the bodyguard i'm currently listening to hello stranger and when i saw this i decided let me add it to my collection this is happiness for beginners i've heard this was very very good if not one of her best books this is a brother's best friend romance as well we have a, a divorcee with two kids a single mom trope and her life has just gone backwards so her brother invites her on this like survival wilderness explorer trip and she goes with him and his best friend and i think a lot of turmoil happens on that trip but yeah i think it sounds really cute and i'm excited i don't know how i feel about brothers best friends romances but it could be good it could be bad we'll see this next book i wanted to have i've already read it but it is one of the best books i've ever read and this author is also one of my faves i think she's perfect for everybody if you like sci-fi if you like um a little bit of more darker grittier themes and motifs in books. I think you will really like B.E. Schwab. This is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I read this during quarantine. This book is probably one of the books that got me back into reading and making me want to start a channel in the first place. It is so good and I never had a copy of it. I just listened to it on Audible. So I decided to pick this up because it is the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition and I found it for $12. And she's brand new guys. This book changed my life the story of this girl who essentially gets cursed hundreds of years ago even though she makes a wish it the wish goes wrong and she's going through life basically immortal but no one can remember who she is whenever you leave her line of sight she's forgotten and so that makes for a very lonely life very compelling story and a very emotional ending I love it. I think this was a five star read for me. So I had to have it in my collection. It's just, it has to be in my bookshelf. Then we have a nonfiction. This is 12 Rules for Life, An Antidote to Chaos by Jordan Peterson. Thought this was pretty good. I have heard a lot of good things about this book and it was in pretty decent condition and it was 25 cents. So not much more to say on this book because I'm not really a nonfiction book reader but I feel like if I'm gonna have a book that's nonfiction, might as well be from someone I've heard about and like. So another book I was pleasantly surprised to find is a new release by someone who is from a town where I grew up 
and that is Adelaide by Genevieve Wheeler. I think this is a literary fiction or perhaps a romance. The book cover is beautiful, by the way. And it made its way onto Book of the Month, which is even cooler. Like a tiny little town in Cal, Florida, and we have an author, and I think that's pretty cool. It says, with unflinching honesty and heart, this relationship debut from a fresh new voice explores grief and mental health while capturing the timeless nature of what it's like to be young and in love with your friends, with your city, and with a person who cannot, will not love you back. I really do think this book is gonna make me cry ugly tears, but in the best way, I don't know. So let me know if you've read this book, if you've heard of this book, but we are dabbling in lit fix here. We are dabbling in emotional reads this year, and I'm excited for that. The last book that I picked up is a classic, and it was in really good condition. I, I had to have it. Again, it was like 50 cents or a dollar, and that is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. She is a beauty. She's a hardcover edition of The Great Gatsby. Tiny little thing, but I'm very excited to read this. I watched the movie and I loved it. So I think this may be a book everyone should read. I don't know. If you've read The Get Great Gatsby, is it like the movie? Is it worth reading? This edition, by the way, is Fingerprint Classics. If you are interested, you can look it up, see if it's still available online. But I'm really happy with my recent trip to the thrift store. I found really great reads. They're all in great condition. Nothing is really worn. And I'm excited to get into all of these books. It was a good month for book shopping, for sure. Those are all the books I've recently received or purchased. And I'm so excited to get into the spring months with these books. I have a lot of books now on my TBR shelf, so I need to get to reading. What do you think? Uh, have you read any of these books? Let me know in the comments. I just feel like book hauls make me so excited for reading. They make me... When you hear the, the spine cracking for the first time, when you can smell the newness of a book, it's my absolute favorite, and I want to revel in that just for a little bit so we're gonna enjoy these books together we're going to have a lot of fun reading this spring we're gonna enjoy diving in to some books i probably normally wouldn't pick up so i'm very excited for my gifts and for just my quirky little thrift store finds i hope this inspires you to go treat yourself to some new books because you probably deserve it but that is going to be it for this video. So thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I will see you in my next video. Bye.